and welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Now today we're going to take a look at Albert Einstein's Sandwich Sudoku, which is on your screen here. Now this is a creation of Axel Abrahamson, and we've featured, I think, three of Axel's puzzles in the past, um, including his one on a similar theme, which was based on Mozart. So we are covering the geniuses um, in this series. Um, Axel's puzzles are always extremely high quality, but pretty difficult so uh, um, we're in for a, a treat today and possibly a long video um, now just to mention as well that during the COVID-19 uh, lockdown uh, we're going to try and keep the schedule up of two videos a day um, Mark is planning to do a video I believe on Sam Kappelman lines six by six Sudoku's um, later on um, and I think that's because I told Mark that these the six by six puzzles that Sam had created were according to Sam anyway extremely hard and Mark poo-pooed that and said no they can't possibly be difficult at all they'll be easy so um, yeah <laughs> you can only watch the video later to find out how easy they are I suspect Sam will be right um, now tomorrow also I want to let you know what I plan to do tomorrow is a star battle video featuring um, some footage from a video that Kurt Hugo Schneider made for me um, on uniqueness in star battles, which is a lovely, it's a very interesting uh, video indeed. Um, and I've managed to source a puzzle from Japan, um, from Ryotaro Chiba, uh, which Ryotaro tells me is one of the, the best star battles ever. So we're going to have a brilliant star battle and Kurt Hugo Schneider in tomorrow's video, so look out for that. Um, now, I need to tell you the rules about um, this puzzle. Um, so, how does it work? Well, outside the grid, we have some sandwich Sudoku clues. Now, if you're not familiar with sandwich Sudoku, uh, the way this works is, um, let's imagine in this column here, this 22 column, we had a one here and a nine here. So, what this 22 clue is telling us is that the sum of the cells sandwiched between the one and the nine in the column, those four squares, have to sum up to 22. Um, so let's do another example of that. If we have four in the row here, that would have to be one cell apart and the difference of four would have to go in the middle. Now you know this four could only be a single digit because let's try and make it two digits. How would we make a two cell sandwich sum to four? Well, you can see we can't because the only way of making four with two cells without repeating the two would be to use a one and a three. And that, of course, repeats the one in the row. So there's all sorts of logic we can use from the sandwich Sudoku clues. Um, now, what else? Um, yes, we've got the Einstein um, feature. So down here, we've got the date that um, Albert Einstein was born, 1879. And here's the date he died, 1955. Now, we need to include these dates in the puzzle. So the finished solution, what we're going to find is that the, the the one will be somewhere, let's say it's here, and then diagonally downwards, there will have to be the string 1879. Now, of course, it could go this way or it could go this way, but it has to be downwards, diagonally sloping in the grid. And similarly, we also need to include his death date here of 1955. And again, the one has to start oh, it's going to be more restricted in terms of where I can put it but you know one nine five five and in fact that wouldn't be a valid arrangement either because the five would repeat in the box but you get the idea what you can't do is um, this sort of thing that is not a valid arrangement it must be just a straight diagonal line um, in one direction or the other and I believe that the uh, you can overlap the dates. So here you can see there's a nine shared and a one shared. So they can overlap, uh, providing they're obeying the rules so that they go downwards diagonally in the grid. Um, and that's it. This is Albert Einstein's puzzle. Now I need to tell you as well, um, the testing for this puzzle suggests it's a bit of a brute. So this might be a long video. Give yourselves time. Click on the link under the video to play along and um, that will take you to this web page where you can uh, try it on whichever device takes your fancy and with that let's get cracking um, now obviously I do a lot of sandwich sudoku because of the our sandwich sudoku app so I'm going to be disappointed if I can't make headway with this 
32 clue at the bottom. That's where my eyes go first. Now, my biggest and best tip for sandwich Sudoku is to color in cells that cannot be ones and nines. I use green. So these squares cannot be a one or a nine in this row. And you can prove that to yourself by thinking about the number. Let's try and put a one in here. If there was a one in here, what's the furthest away we could place the nine in this row? Well, it's obviously gonna be there. And that would mean I'd need these five yellow cells here to sum up to 32. Now, is that possible? Well, it's not because eight, seven, six, five, four, that only subs up to 30. So there's absolutely no way this square can be uh, a one. So that gives us this pattern. And the other thing, that, I mean, there's another way we can look at this 32 clue. Let's think about it further. We know that the total, if we sum this whole row up, it will contain the digits from one to nine. So the total of the row is 45. That's what you get if you sum one to nine. Now, if that's the case, let's put a one in here and a nine here. So we'd have 32 inside the sandwich, plus nine plus one, well that's 42. So this square has to be a three. So you can see that in this row, there's always gonna be a three outside the sandwich um, and it's either going to be here or here so that's and that means well the other thing we can say is with certainty there must be a one or a nine in this little domino here and this little domino here so that's where I would start now up here look we've got three consecutive columns that's, that have a higher total than 21. Now, where, wherever you have a total of 22 or higher, you can immediately green in the center of those columns. Now, why is that? It's a similar logic to what we've just done. If we put the one in here and try and place a nine as far away as possible, we now need these three squares to sum up to 22. Well, eight plus seven plus six is only 21. So that's not enough. And that's why we can place green cells there. We can place a green cell here. Look, we've got, a, we've got the four total here. We've already looked at that. The four total must be sandwiched between a one and a nine. So we're gonna, we know that the, there's gonna be a one, four, nine or a nine, four, one string along these cells. It can't go here because obviously we can't put the four total in so many green cells. Now, now the 22 clues look because of these green cells down here it's not possible for these two squares to be a one or a nine either so let's check test that out if i put the one here the furthest away i can put the nine is not here look because that's green it's going to be here and that leaves only one two three cells for the sandwich and we know that 22 is a four cell sandwich so these two squares are green We can't put we can't put the one and the nine in this box in row six because I can't put cells totaling nineteen between them. So there must be a one or a nine in one of those two squares. I'll use a different colour actually. And if oh actually hang on. I guess this could be a zero, it's just less than ten. So it could, could it be a one and then a nine there? And then nothing in there. That would place a one or a nine here and a one or a nine here in row six. Hmm. Can there be a one and a nine here? Let's just check that out. If there was a one and a nine here, the 25 clue yeah, that, that could work if this was a one or a nine. Ah, no, this doesn't work. This doesn't work. It's tricky to see why, but let me show you. So, if we, if we, if we think about whether a one and a nine are possible here, we've got a 25 total that forces this to be a one or a nine. That forces this one to be a three. Now, how does the 16 clue work? 16 must be at least three cells 
So the other one or a nine in column nine would be there. And can you see the problem with that? Well, the problem is this five clue. This five clue, we, we can't put a third one nine into this box. So the, the one nine would have to be here. And those two squares would have to sum up to five without using three or one. You can't do it. So actually, that is, that's really tricky, but there, there's, there's a one or nine in those squares and there's a one or nine in those squares as well. So let's use a different color for that. Now, now we can do some more green squares though, because if this sum here in this row is less than 10, let's make it as big as possible. We'll make it nine. Nine has a maximum of three cells in the sandwich if we use two, three, and four. So if this was a one, nine, two, three, four, this is the absolute furthest away that we could place the second one, nine in this row. So all of those squares are green. And in the 19 row, if this was a one nine, now 19 could be a four cell sandwich, but it can't be a five cell sandwich because five, a five cell sandwich, two plus three plus four plus five plus six is 20. So if this was a one nine, one, two, three, four, there could be a one nine here, but there can't be a one nine there. So this square is green. And now what? So there must be a one or a nine in one of those two squares. The four clue. I'm not sure we can tell how that lies yet. It could lie completely in this box or it could straddle this boundary. All of these three clues are very small. Uh, so hang on. This cell might be interesting. I'm just wondering, because we've got a 10 clue here. Now, if this cell is a green cell, how do we fit 10 into this column? 10 needs to be at least two cells, so we can't put it in one box. It's gonna to have to straddle the whole of the middle or box four here. And it can't, look at that. Oh, that's cool. This is a breakthrough. Right, if the one and the nine are here and here in this column, these three squares have to add up to 10. Well, there's only one way that can work with two, three, and five. What do I put in this square now? We know this square is either a one or a nine, or it's a three. And all three of those options are ruled out if this square is green. So this square is not green. Now that, oh, that's gonna give us a digit. Now this, because this square not being green and being a one or a nine means this square must be a one or a nine. So we know the four must sit between those two things. That's going to give us more green squares. Look, we know that must be a, um, a one or a nine in this string of three cells. Ah, we can do better now though, because the 19 clue, look, it's not possible that this square or this square are a one or a nine anymore. And hopefully it's becoming clear how important it is to keep track of the possible positions of ones and nines. That's why I need to use colors for this. Um, if this was a one or a nine, we know 19 is three cells, one, two, three, it's broken. So we've got to green those ones out and we've got four little, four little dominoes now. And we can do more look in this column. We've got a two clue and this is a one or a nine. So the two must be in one of those two squares. The one or nine is either going to be here or here. So these two and these two are both green. The 10 clue, we know that's at least two squares, two cells large. 
And in fact, if it's three cells large, it can never be three cells large up here. So if this was green and this was a one nine, we know that doesn't work because now we have exactly the same problem as when I tried to make this cell green. This square has no valid solution. So that means this square must be green. That can't be a one or a nine. It's less than 18 clue is it's just so unhelpful. I mean, it could be zero or any number up to 17. Um, okay, so what, what are we meant to do now? Oh, look, we can use these 222 clues now because we've got green areas there. So there must be a one or a nine in that one of those two squares. And there must be a 1 or a 9 in one of those two squares. And there must be a 1 or a 9 in one of those three and one of those three. Getting, it's getting a very colourful grid. Now, look at box 9. I've got two dominoes in box 9. I know there's a 1, 9 in one of those two, 1, 9 in one of those two. So those squares are all green. Uh, and we can do a trick here. Let's look at the, these two clues. We've got an 18 and a 5 clue. So it's not, it's not possible in this row for there to be a 1 here and a 9 here, for example, because neither of these clues is a 0 clue. So what we know, actually, is that the 1, 9 in this arrangement, this 2 by 2 arrangement here, they are always offset. They're always sort of one limb of an X. They're either here and here or here and here. Now that matters, look, because we can then deduce some more green squares, I think. And in this row, that's going to be very useful because we know, therefore, there's a one or a nine in one of these two positions. What's the furthest away the, the, the other one or nine could be? Well, it's going to be here. So these two squares are green. And that means there's a one or a nine in one of those two positions. Now, can we do better than that? So we now know there's a one or a nine in one of those two positions. And there's not a one or a nine in one of those two positions. And now I'm stuck again. So where am I meant to look next? Sixteen, twenty-five, two, fourteen, five. Ah, this is less than five. So this is always a one cell clue. One cell is in the sandwich, yeah. Okay, so this, that's obviously green. This is, so either the one or the nine are in those two positions or the one and the nine are in those two positions. Ah, no, that doesn't work. This doesn't work. Let me show you why. This is tricky. This is very difficult. Oops. Um, so if the one and the nine in this column are into these two positions, look what effect that has on this column. Now this can't be a one or a nine. So there's a one or a nine here. But the critical thing is that this square is therefore a two. Now look at the effect on the 32 clue of this square being a one or a nine. We know the one or the other one or nine must be here because there's going to be one outy. It must be here. This is the three. This is a one or a nine. And look where that places a one or a nine in column nine. Look, one, two. It can't be here. We can't have a two cell sum that gives 16. It has to be here because a five cell sum is always too big. It's always at least 20. So this square would be a one or a nine. And now look, we've got a massive problem because in this row, 
we need a clue that's less than 10. Well, let's make it nine. Nine could be a three cell sum. Well, one, two, three. You might think it's working at this point if I put the one nine here, but it's not because the only way of getting three cells to add to nine is with two, three, and four. And this two rules that out. That is horribly difficult, but I think good logic. So that means we get a breakthrough, don't we? Because the one nine must be up there, which means this square is, uh, we still don't know what it is even. It's a two or a three. And it's obviously we can green in those squares. These two are green now, which means these two other parts of their domino are ones and nines and need to be colored in white. Uh, I know white right there, that's nonsense. Let's delete it. Delete. Oh, and now we're going to get loads of stuff done because the bottom row is now forced. We know that the other one nine is going to have to be there. This is going to be green. This is going to be three. This is a one nine. This has to be at least a three cell sum. So this square is green. This square is white and is a one nine. That fixes the five clue look because there's no other place we can put the one nine other than there. So that's pretty useful. That means this is a five. This can't be in. This is a one nine. 22 is at least four cells. One, two, three, four. That square can turn green. Gives us another domino. This must be a two look because of the two clue. The 10 clue means that must be two, three, and five, which means that's not a two. Ah, now that means, look, we've got a two in one of those squares, two here, that means that is two. Um, a 22 clue, so if we look here, if this is a one nine, we can't put the other end of that here. This can't be a one or a nine, or we'd have one cell that would have to be an outy totaling to 13. That's not possible. 25 clue in column eight. So 25 needs to be at least four squares. So this square can turn green and that gives us another one nine look. What a puzzle, hey? This is not easy. Um, oh, now the 19 clue has a knock on effect. If we try and put a one nine here in row six, we know that we'd have one plus nine is 10, plus the sandwich, 19, so that's 29. These three squares would have to sum up to 16. Well, you can see we've already got a two, so these two would have to sum up to 14. And if I make that as big as possible with a five, this could be a nine, but that repeats the nine in the row. So this square is not a one or a nine. This one is a one or a nine. Uh, but unfortunately, we don't know anything about column five or column four. Nineteen, four, eight, three. Oh, the sixteen now. Now we've got this one locked in. This one can't be a one nine, so this one is a one nine. We've not used any of the Einstein dates yet. We get a load of greens up there. Sixteen is at least three squares. So we get another domino up here. Look. So we've got two dominoes here. So we've got this, this less than 18 clue. Um, oh, but that's interesting, isn't it? Because if we look at these two dominoes here, and, and it, given that this has to be a one or a nine, one of these clues, because we can't make this a one nine pair, that breaks this 14 clue. One of these clues belongs to this, this row. So it can't possibly be that one. It's gonna to have to be that one. And these four squares therefore, so this sum is not a zero sum. This is quite a big number. I suppose it could be as big as 17, but it's definitely um, 
It's definitely not as small as I was originally thinking. So now this square turns green. This square becomes a 1 or a 9. This square can't be green or can't be a 1 or a 9 now. We've done the 1s and 9s in box 3. We've got one domino left here, one domino left here, and and a 14 here I've not used yet. That's got to be at least two cells. Those two can turn green. That can't be a five look because of the five there. Nineteen four we've used. This is a less than ten sum. That still gives an option, I think, here. Fourteen. Sixteen. Oh, 25 clue here. So this has outie summing to 10. That's got to be 2, 3, 5. That's not a 2. And that is useful. This 14 clue now. That is perfect. Look, so this cannot now be a 2 cell sum because we can't make 2 cells add up to 14 if one of them is a 3 or a 5. It needs this square as well. That square turns green. This square is a 1 or a 9. This square is green. This is our last domino. Wow, okay, so we've we've almost done the ones and nines now. I'm sure we can, we probably can work out how the yes, we can work it out actually. Look. If this is a four cell sum, if this square is a one nine, we'd have four cells, one, two, three, four, in the sandwich. Now you can make four squares add up to 14 with different digits, but only if you use the numbers two, three, four, and five, and you can't use the two. So this has to be the one nine. This is green. Therefore this is green, and this is our last one nine. Now normally in a sandwich Sudoku you've got to have at least one digit given at the start. So this these birth and death dates of Einstein are going to have to disambiguate where the one and nines go. Um, because otherwise you can just swap them round. That's, that's the critical point. Unless one is a given you can just invert the grid and you get another valid solution to the Sudoku. So Look at this one. This one is the most restricted, 1955. Five. It's restricted in two ways. Firstly, because there's a 1 and a 9 next to each other, they have to be on a diagonal, diagonally adjacent. So there's a couple of options I can immediately see. This is too low, 1195, one, and it would drop off the edge of the grid. But also, the 55 here can't be in the same... Yeah, this one doesn't work, because if this was 1, 9, the five five would repeat in the in the box, so that one's not working. So it's got to be this one, or I've broken the puzzle. And that, yes, that's good. This is this works. One nine five. That can be a five. It's in a different box. It's in a different column. And that makes this a three and this a two. And. These three squares, oh, that's this is beautiful now. This one nine that's going to disambiguate all the one nines, is it? Let's see, uh, that's got to be a one, that's a nine, that's a one, that's a nine, that's a nine now, that's a one, that's a nine, that's a one, that's a nine, that's a one, that's got to be a nine, and that is a one. And now we're getting somewhere. What a brilliant idea this puzzle is, isn't it? Six, seven, eight here. Ah, so now we can... Ah, we've got a three cell sum as well here. So the only way that you can have a total less than 10 that's a three cell sum is with two, three, and four, which makes this square of five. The 16 clue is now forced, look, because we need those two squares to add up to 11. 
without using 2, 9, 3, 8 or 5, 6. That's got to be 4, 7. Oh, there's a 4 there actually, so that's further disambiguated. 7 must shift into one of those squares. 3, 7, 5, 4. Um, oh, we can place a 5 down here just by normal Sudoku rules. The 22 column now is fixed, look, because we've got 1 plus 9 is 10, plus the sandwich, that's another 22, so that's 32 in those squares. These two have got to add up to 13. There's a 5 there, that's an 8 therefore. That means that's an 8, there's an 8 in one of these two squares. 3, 3, 32. Um, ten. Right, so where is the next place to look to make efficient pro? Oh, I tell you what, I haven't used, and that's the born date 1879. So that means I need a 1 and a 9 on a diagonal. So that one doesn't work because that hits a 1 in the fourth position. 1 8, no, that one doesn't work. That one might work. 1, 8, oh, no, that one doesn't work. That has a 7 here. I don't think that one works. This one better work. We've got a 1, eight. yes, that, so it does. Look, it comes off the same one as the death date. The death date goes that way, and the birth date goes that way. 1, 8, 7, 9, thank goodness for that. 1879. So this is an 8 now. Um, those two squares have got to be 4 and 6 to complete the row. 5. So we don't know this total, which is a bit... So let's go through it a bit more methodically then. Um, seven. There must be a 7 in one of those squares. There must be a 7 in one of these squares. So we've used the 32. We've used the 5. We've not yet looked at this 18 clue. So these three squares have got a sum to 18. Hmm. Oh, maybe this column though. We've got 2 and 6. To... Ah, that's disambiguated. That is useful, look. So we've got 1 plus 9 is 10, plus 18 is 28. These squares have got to sum up to 17. We've got 2 and 5 already. So these two squares have got to sum up to 10. So they're either 3, 7 or 4, 6. Well, they're not 3, 7. There's a 3 here. And that 3 means there's a 3 in one of those squares. So these two are 4 and 6, there's a 4 here, that's a 6, that's a 4, that's a 7. These two squares have got to be 3 and 4, that's disambiguated again. 4, 3, these are 7 and 8. These squares here have got to be what? Um, it's 3, 7 and 8 I think. Let's label that up and see if we can see anything. There's a 7 here. 8, oh. Ah! Seven here, eight here. These squares have got to be two, four, and six. No, I can't see how to do anything with that. Um, ah, nineteen here. That's going to tell us, isn't it? So this, this is a four. That disambiguates that nicely. That means this isn't a four. These squares have got to be two, three, and six. One of these two squares is a 5. The 10 clue we've used. The 14 clue here we've not used. But we don't know much about this row. Hmm. And 14 clue here we've not. Again, this just seems very open-ended, unless I'm missing a bit of logic there. 
Ah, the 25 clue's fixed though now because we've already got 19, so that gives us a 6 here. It's not actually helpful. Well, I suppose the 2, 3 is helpful. That knocks a 6, 7 into those squares. Maybe that helps with this look. Not massively though. 22. So if these add to 22, 32, these three squares add to 13. Again, not seeing a massive restriction there. These have to add to at least 14. Let's say their maximum though, that if this was 17, 17 plus 10 is 27, plus eight, well that's 35. These two have to add to at least 10. Now, that is useful because look, there's fours here, here and here. So there's a four in one of those two squares. Well, that can't be a four because there's no way of then getting to 10. So this is a four. That can't be a six. So this has to be a number that's at least equal to six. Six, seven or eight, both of those. Um, Twenty-two. Maybe I've just got to do normal Sudoku at this point to try and um, spot something useful. There's got to be a three and a five in this string here. Don't see that how that helps very much. So I think I'm missing something. What am I missing? The eighteen clues, not interesting. Ten clue. 14, ah, here, yeah, this 14, that is going to be more restricted by these two digits, isn't it? So I've got 14 plus 24, these have to add to 21, these have to be 7 and 8, that is very helpful. That means this is a 6, this is a 7. The 6 here means this is a 3 or a 5. This can't be a 7 anymore. And if we have a look here at how this 14, again, we've got 24 in those squares, plus another 11, that's 35. These two squares have to sum to 10, and that is very helpful. So this is 2 and 8. Ah, now maybe we can revisit the 17 clue now. Well, not that it is 17, but if this was 17, 27, 35, these two have to be at least 10. Ah, now if it was 27, so three and seven would work, would it? Ah, but there's an eight there, that fixes this as a seven. Eight there, six here, seven here, eight here, six here. So now it is helpful because now I need these two to add up to at least ten. This can't be a three anymore. Five, three, five. This is a five now. This has got to be a two, three, or a four. Eight, eight, this square's got to be an eight. Three, seven, eight. This 22 clue now might help us because we need these to add up to seven. They've got to be, they've got to be three and four. So that forces this to be a two. Oh, nice, look at that. So this can't be four anymore. This has to be two or six and it can't be a six. So that's the two, that's the six. 
This two disambiguates the two four at the bottom. That's a four now. We still need, th that's a seven. This has got to be three and six, which we can do. That fixes the three and the seven. And if I haven't made a mistake, those two are three and five. And it does look like it's gonna work, doesn't it? Wow, check, yes. 40 minutes, oh my goodness. Uh, well, I'm, to be honest, I'm not that unhappy with it. I could have been a bit quicker at the end if I'd spotted how these 14s worked a bit more smoothly. But that was not easy, not an easy puzzle. Um, let me know how you got on, whether you enjoyed it, and whether you managed to crack Albert Einstein's Sudoku. Thanks very much to Axel Abrahamson. Brilliant.